And don't forget to order your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book, Stiff Arming Football Myths, an excellent book that you can find on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books available in both PDF as well as paperback form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2014 NFL team preview for the San Diego Chargers. We're going to take a look at their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams. But first, let's start off on the offensive side of the football with the quarterback position. Quietly, Phillip Rivers played the best football of his career last season, throwing for over 4,400 yards, 32 touchdowns, and a career nigh 69.5% completion percentage. And now with additional targets around him, there is no reason why he can't continue to perform at a high level. The team signed Kellen Clemens in the offseason to be the number two guy while bringing last year's seventh round pick Brad Sorensen along slowly. And as long as number 17 is back there, the Chargers will always have a chance. Very good group of running backs here in San Diego. Ryan Matthews, who's entering his fifth season, rushed for over 1,200 yards and proved yet again when he's out there at 100%, he's a difference maker. And speaking of difference maker, Danny Woodhead is instant offense. Whether it's as a runner or a receiver, he gets the job done and he finished second on the team in both categories last year. In free agency, the Chargers signed Donald Brown from the Indianapolis Colts, who's a solid back that also has receiving skills. And if they plan to keep four backs, it'll be a tough choice between Curry and Williams and rookies Marion Grice and Brandon Oliver. That's three talented backs vying for one spot. Grice's ability as a receiver and returner gives him a slight advantage. What a season Keenan Allen had last year as a rookie, leading the team in receiving yards with 1,048. He's a legit game-breaker and very versatile as he can be moved all around the formation. He and Eddie Royal formed an explosive one-two combo in the health of Malcolm Floyd, and his return to 100% would only elevate this group. Fourth-year man Vincent Brown made significant strides last year and, in my opinion, is a solid number two or number three option depending on the situation. In the seventh round, the Chargers took Tevin Reese out of Baylor, and while he's not the receiver Eddie Royal was coming out of college, he's just as explosive. And if there's one sleeper that could make the roster is Dontrell Emmon, the former Toronto Argonaut who fits the mold of what the Chargers look for at receiver, long and athletic. At tight end, future Hall of Famer Antonio Gates is entering his 12th season and still garners a lot of attention from defensive coordinators each and every week. San Diego has done a solid job in grooming Ladarius Green out of University of Louisiana, who averaged 22 yards a catch last year. And John Phillips is a solid blocking tight end, but in my opinion, he can be pushed by Ryan Otten, who I believe gives you both the blocking aspect and the receiving game that Phillips doesn't. You can't have the fifth rated offense if your offensive line is not doing great things up front. And despite moving pieces around consistently, the Chargers as a group only allowed 30 sacks, which was tied for fourth in the NFL. And that helped pave the way for a rushing attack that averaged 122 yards a game. San Diego got very good play from their tackles, Keen Dunlap and DJ Fluker, who got better each and every week as a rookie. Guards Chad Reinhardt and Jeremy Clary, along with center Nick Harwick, make for a solid interior. Both Johnny Troutman and rookie third-round pick Chris Watt out of Notre Dame could also push for starting roles. You look at Rich Ornberger and Michael Harris, they provide quality depth up front for San Diego. Both Kendall Reyes and Corey Legion are trending in the right direction. Legion excelled versus the run and getting after the quarterback. Reyes has been steady and slowly has gotten better versus the run. Lawrence Guy is a solid player to have in rotation and on the inside. Nose tackle Sean Lessamore stepped in as a starter and performed well by bypassing Kwame Gethers in the process. Gethers is still young enough to make an impact, but now must also fend off rookie fifth-round pick Ron Carruthers out of Arkansas State, who, in my opinion, could even push for the starting job this year. I like the talent here, but it's all about playing consistent football as a group. Donald Butler was the team's best linebacker last year and was re-signed in the offseason. He and Manti Teo finished second and third on the squad in tackles, respectively, and you'd like to see Teo become a little bit more stout at the point of attack versus the run, and his cover skills should pick up as familiarity with the scheme eliminates the thinking on the field and he'll be able to play faster. On the outside, there's some age and health questions. Both Jared Johnson and Dwight Freeney are up there in age and had health issues last year, with Freeney 
Greeny missing 12 games. The hope is that former first-round pick Melvin Ingram can stay healthy and be one of the starters, and he drafted Jeremiah Adicho out of Georgia Tech in round two, which gives him yet another athletic edge rusher. He should see plenty of time as a rookie. I'd also look out for last year's sixth-round pick Torek Williams, who played okay last year to see situational duty, and Adrian Hamilton, who I think is an underrated signing and also undrafted rookie free agent Colton Underwood, is one name you should definitely hear a lot of in the preseason. He was a pass rushing specialist at Illinois State. The Chargers got better on the back end as the season progressed, and they'll be much better from a numbers perspective. In 2014, they got an unexpected addition with Brandon Flowers was released by the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a very good football player and gives them a legit number one corner to team up with Sharice Wright, who did okay in his first season of starting. Rookie first-round pick Jason Verrett out of TCU is an excellent matchup corner that can play in the slot or on the outside, giving San Diego three solid cornerbacks. And when you look at last year's fifth-round draft pick Steve Williams, he's healthy and should battle with Richard Marshall for that fourth cornerback spot. The safety position is in good hands with two-time pro bowler Eric Weddle, who is a mistake eraser on the back end and a good alley defender. Marcus Gilchrist held his own in his move to strong safety with 77 tackles and two interceptions. And in addition to his special teams work, Darryl Stuckey provides quality depth for the Chargers. Undrafted rookie free agent Alden Darby out of Arizona State is a strong safety with ball skills and has an excellent chance to make the roster. The Chargers have two very good kickers in place kicker Nick Novak and punter Mike Cyphers. Novak went 34 out of 37 on his field goal attempts last year, 2 out of 2 from 50 yards plus, and Cyphers' hang time on punts allowed for little return. He also dropped 30 inside the 20. The return game could go in a multitude of ways, but in my opinion, I would save Keenan Allen for only crucial situations as a punt returner. I'd look for either Danny Woodhead or rookie Marion Grice to handle these duties. This was a team that got hot toward the end of the season as the defense improved. They're healthier now in the linebacking core, which should increase the pass rush. And the offense is a well-balanced, dynamic attack, so you can see the optimism in San Diego this year. Consistency would be the biggest cause for concern. They are in a very tough division, and they can't afford those shoulda, coulda, woulda type losses like you saw last year versus Houston, Tennessee, Washington, and Miami. The road to the Super Bowl for the Chargers goes as follows. Number one, they have to start generating turnovers from the secondary. So the secondary has to make plays this year in order for San Diego to get to where they want to be. And that pass rush has to come to life. That kind of ties into the first point. If the second level and third level can work together, I think they can do some great things this year. And they have to stay multiple on offense. Remember, this was a top five offense last year. They did a lot of great things running the football. And Phillip Rivers had his best season as a pro throwing the football. So again, if they can put all of these three things together, the future future is bright in San Diego. I have the Chargers finishing second in the AFC West. This is a dangerous football team. They got better on the defensive side of the ball this offseason and with their ability to move the football and put up points, if the defense just gets to top 15, they could challenge for the division title and ultimately find themselves making a lot of noise in the playoffs. I also want to give a huge shout out to Charger fan forums for always showing football game plan support.